Hello, this is the 2014-2015 Metropolitan Year in Review video report. I hope you take the time to watch it. There's been a lot of accomplishments. We've done a lot of amazing things in the face of one of perhaps the most challenging years we've ever had at Metropolitan. This video report will capture some of those moments, some of the great accomplishments by staff, and it doesn't take too long. So please watch it and be proud of the accomplishments. Unprecedented, historic, record-breaking, worst ever. These are a few of the words describing drought conditions California water managers are dealing with this year. When the business of providing water becomes the business of having enough water, you can count on many worsts and even more firsts. For this short video report, we'll recap the firsts. 2013 driest year on record in California, 2014, hottest year on record, 2015, lowest snowpack ever recorded in California. And yet Metropolitan is meeting the challenges head on. This region uses less water today to serve 19 million people than it did in 1990 to serve 14 million people. How did we do that? We're not aware of anywhere in the world where they've done something this large. You're going to see a significant transformation uh, as part of this action, as part of this drought response, uh, that will be something we'll see throughout Southern California uh, for decades to come. You are here, California. You can see the drought from space. Water storage is shrinking dramatically due to drought and other factors. That's why developing new and more reliable supplies and managing reserves is a key priority. This past fiscal year, we drew 900,000 acre-feet from a variety of storage sources. That's about 100,000 acre-feet more water than is held in the Diamond Valley Lake, the Southland's largest reservoir. To supplement supplies, Metropolitan operated the Colorado River Aqueduct year-round at a maximum eight pump flow to bring nearly 1.2 million acre feet to the service area. Another 150,000 acre feet came from water exchanges, purchases, and banking programs. These actions represented an aggressive program to ensure CRA pipelines were at full capacity. A forward-thinking Colorado River Conservation Plan was debuted to address potential shortage conditions on the river in partnership with the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation. The collaboration contributed $11 million in funds for pilot conservation programs aimed at reducing demands in different areas that include agricultural, municipal, and industrial water uses. Metropolitan's capital investment plan was managed in a way to address drought-related needs with actions such as deferring some previously planned system maintenance shutdowns and finishing projects to extend delivery of Colorado River water to areas that typically receive supplies only from the state water project. Metropolitan also had an aggressive tunnel scraping project that resulted in greater and more efficient water flow through the Colorado River aqueduct and the district used predictive vibration analysis to foresee problems with our electrical power generators, thus sidestepping longer maintenance downtimes. The most sweeping effort to manage reserves was implementation of the water supply allocation plan at level three, which reduces water supplies to our member agencies by 15%. This was only the fourth time in the district's history that wholesale water deliveries have been restricted. To help Southern Californians deal with the drought and plan for our long-term water needs, the district this year increased its conservation budget by $350 million, bringing the total two-year conservation budget to an unprecedented $450 million, by far the nation's largest. 
We committed a lot of money to conservation. I think it's in line with uh, the history of Metropolitan. Uh, we do big things and it's paid off over the years. The added funding was in response to record public demand for Metropolitan's water savings rebate programs, led by the popularity of turf removal. At one point, the call center was processing $10 million a day in applications and handling 2,000 calls per day. The program has helped to change the mindset about Southern California outdoor landscaping, replacing thirsty lawns with drought-tolerant plants and new water-saving devices inside homes and businesses. We also launched several new programs aimed at expanding water savings. A new recycled water pilot program, fitness center rebate program, public agency rebate program. Even with those new investments in conservation, Metropolitan maintained its solid financial footing. Metropolitan's sound water and fiscal management were recognized once again by bond rating agencies and investors, leading to confidence in Metropolitan's reliability and strong bond ratings. High bond ratings were secured with AAA ratings for Standard & Poor's, AA Plus for both Moody's and Fitch. What was once one is now two. This is the short version of how the Bay Delta Conservation Plan has evolved into the California Water Fix and California Eco Restore projects. Delta water conveyance improvements and habitat restoration measures will be planned as two separate but still coordinated efforts that support co-equal goals, water supply reliability, and protecting the Delta ecosystem. Changes to the proposed conveyance facilities would reduce the overall impact to the environment and minimize construction disruption to local Delta communities. The state amended the draft EIR-EIS analysis to reflect the change and the environmental documents were released in summer of 2015 for public review and comment. Metropolitan staff continues to work with the state and other water contractors, recognizing the importance of these Delta improvements to our region and the state. The drought rose to the top of public consciousness this year. It made its presence known and was hard to miss. Take a look. This is what drought looks like in California. The Golden State is in the middle of an exceptional drought. The state's drought. California's drought. It's severe drought. The governor ordering the strictest crackdown on water use in the state's history. It even found its place in a John Stewart monologue. California's reservoirs are empty. The snowpack is gone. What little water remains is controlled by a ruthless, disfigured warlord doling out precious moisture from his mountain stronghold. Wow. Governor Jerry Brown, who ordered a 25% drop in urban water this year, visited Metropolitan, commending the district for its commitment to water savings and launch of the nation's largest conservation program. The half billion that you've appropriated uh, for uh, dealing with uh, the drought for conservation uh, here in Southern California, uh, that's really to be commended. His visit drew local and national media coverage. And I hope that people in other parts of the state uh, pick that up as an example. Metropolitan's visibility was also advanced through legislative activities and 480 briefings covering issues such as the Bay Delta, Colorado River, local supply, water quality, and conservation investment for elected officials in Washington, D.C., Sacramento, and locally. Metropolitan also launched a $5.5 million multilingual advertising and outreach campaign, calling on all of us to take a turn to save water. Brought to you by the Metropolitan Water District. To reach a broader audience with its important message about the Southland's water situation, Metropolitan also unveiled a revamped website. And we jumped into the world of social media with Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Here we go. Metropolitan's general manager even took the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge <laughs> with Tree People founder Andy Lipkus. <laughs> 
using the opportunity to speak out about conservation. Originally, we were wondering about throwing water around during a drought, but Andy came up with the idea that we should water trees while we're doing it, and now we're doing it in an environmentally drought responsible way. We're being water wise. Over the course of the year, Metropolitan organized, sponsored, and supported hundreds of events for businesses, environmental and community groups, educators, and the public. This includes classroom activities, the Solar Cup competition, the eighth annual Spring Green event, and a series of innovation-focused H2O Tech Connect workshops through our business outreach program. Our educational efforts informed Californians about Proposition 1 on the November 2014 state ballot, which was overwhelmingly approved by voters and will invest more than $7 billion for water quality, supply, and infrastructure improvements. Metropolitan's local resource program was refined in 2014-15 to expand the program and encourage greater participation. This resulted in ever-growing partnerships for groundwater recovery and water recycle projects. In the planning arena, Metropolitan initiated work on two of our most comprehensive planning blueprints for Water Tomorrow, the Integrated Resources Plan and the Regional Urban Water Management Plan. Both of these significant undertakings are updated through an interactive process that involves other water agencies and interested public stakeholders. With a focus on future innovation, Metropolitan's technical advisory group teams, under the oversight of the Business Outreach Group, worked to identify future solutions and products for energy and water resource management. So how did we get all this done? The answer is great employees. Metropolitan's employees are committed to doing a good job. And the district is equally committed to providing them with the tools to do their best work. To that end, the district has numerous programs that promote and support employee development at all levels. Let's go back to the, my example here with Sonia and Ankit. So Sonia In addition, Metropolitan also has a strong recruitment program to attract top job applicants. Some highlights this year include the first Water System Organization Management Academy was held with succession planning as an important backdrop. Workshops are held over the course of about 10 months, with a class of 30 journey-level craft employees learning to further develop management skills. The graduation of 13 craft employees from the apprenticeship program. A new slate of classes focusing on Metropolitan's financial and budget systems, business writing, and online and classroom professional development. An expanded administrative assistant admin analyst development program team building and management coaching for managers, which included a management forum, recruitment for 172 positions that were primarily vacant, and a more diverse workforce. For the first time in five years, Metropolitan both hired and promoted more minorities than non-minorities, reflecting the diverse Southern California community we serve. Well, hope you enjoyed the video. I thought it was an amazing list of accomplishments, some great scenery, great work by staff. Now, things to look forward coming up. We have just this last board meeting approved a potential partnership with the LA County Sand Districts where we're doing a demonstration project. Eventually, if this pans out, this will be the largest recycling plant of its kind built in the nation. Very exciting opportunity. You're gonna see a lot of work over that over the next couple of years. I was very impressed by our staff during the drought, DVL, Diamond Valley Lake, got pulled down to its lowest level since we filled it. Well, if you're going to have lemons, you might as well make some lemonade. We took advantage of this opportunity. We pushed down our boat ramp another 50 feet, entirely done by district forces, completed just in time for winter, and hopefully a refilling of the lake. A couple other things coming up. Making tremendous progress on the Governor's Delta Fix program. We're going to see a lot of exciting opportunities there and really hope for some long-term success. And who knows, maybe El Nino will bring us enough rain that we can have a little of the pressure and heat taken off us. Again, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next year.